Hello again Internet, Astro with Roro here. Tonight we're up for a quick one on how to really quickly get your polar alignment down pat. Now Nina has just come out with a newest release which allows a whole bunch of third parties to create plugins for the platform. So if you're wanting to do this, make sure you're using Nina and you're using the nightly 1.11 version. So what we're quickly gonna do is I'm gonna show you how the plugin works and how this polar lamp method is better than any other that I have seen to date. Then we'll quickly jump into the software. I'll show you how to install it and use it yourself and hopefully save yourselves a lot of time. So here I have the EQ6R Pro telescope with a RedCat 51 on it and a 294 monochrome from ZWO. Now, why would you use this new tool over something like SharpCap, which has a fantastic polar alignment tool in it? Well, the three-point polar alignment allows you to get a really precise polar alignment anywhere in the sky. I can't see the South Celestial Pole from where I'm located on this balcony. However, I can see the meridian. So traditionally, I have been doing a drift alignment method, but as we all know, that can be very tedious and time consuming. So with this new polar alignment tool, you get the benefits of SharpCap's live updating, pointing you exactly in the direction where you need to go, with the ability to do that anywhere in the sky. So if you don't have visibility on the North or South Celestial Pole, or if you don't even have visibility on the Meridian, you are still gonna be able to get a fantastic polar alignment. For this, I have pointed smack bang between the Meridian and the South Celestial Pole. So let's see how we go. So here we have the telescope slewing to its first location, which I've set up here as 46 degrees altitude, 101 degrees in azimuth. So it is now going to quickly slew to three different points in the sky, take a plate solve and calculate our polar alignment error. Let me fast forward through this and get to the end bit. Okay, all done. We now have our azimuth and altitude error, resulting in about a four degree total polar alignment error. So I'm gonna start off with my altitude error and fix that. So I've got about one and a half degrees here that we need to lower the equatorial mount by. In between each movement, just give it a second so that it can retake and recheck the polar alignment. One degree to go. All right, 0.2 of a degree, that's pretty good. 0.15, perfect. Okay, let's now move the azimuth. So starting at four degrees, got three degrees, two degrees, one degree, And there we go, that is already a very good polar alignment. So before finishing up, let me quickly run you through how to install and use this plugin in Nina, as well as some of the shortcomings that I found and settings that you will definitely want to look at and change to make it work for you. To get started, as I said earlier, you wanna download and install Nina 1.11, the latest nightly version, which at the time of filming is number 113. Now, in this new version on the left here, you can see there's the plugins tab. So you wanna click on that and then click on the available plugins little button here. And you'll see there's already a couple of plugins available. Come down and click three point polar alignment and up in the top right, there is a button saying install. Click on that, it'll install it, restart Nina, and it will now be under the installed section here. Down the bottom here, you will want to come down and change a few settings. By default, the target distance is 20 degrees. If you find that the polar alignment is moving too far between images, then adjust this distance. I find that 10 degrees works absolutely fine, which means it takes a photo, moves five degrees, takes a second photo, another five degrees, and takes a third photo for a total of 10 degrees movement. Also, you'll want to change the default search radius. I set it to 15 degrees. This is how far it'll check in the plate solving for your polar alignment. If this is set to two degrees and you are off by more than two degrees in your polar alignment, then you're gonna have trouble getting the plate solved to work. So I would encourage you to increase this to 10 or 15 degrees to be on the safe side. 
Now that we've got the settings here done, let's jump in to the sequencer on the left hand side here. Here you'll want to go to the right and click advanced sequencer. Then on the right scroll down until you find polar alignment, three point polar alignment. Drag it across into the sequencer and for some reason it doesn't seem to be keeping the default settings here. So. For me, I'll be changing the measure point distance back to 10 degrees. I find that the telescope movement at 3 degrees a second is more than adequate. You can leave on or off the direction east depending on which way you're pointing your telescope. Search solver radius, again make sure that's 10 to 15. And here you want to put in your altitude and azimuth that works for you. The easiest way I find to do this is to bring up your EQ mod, point in the sky where you know there is nothing and it is clear. Then finally, you wanna fill out your camera settings here. I set mine to one second, two by two binning to increase the signal to noise ratio, and a gain of 300. These, pretty, these images don't need to be pretty. You just need Nina to be able to solve the stars that are in it. Offset, I leave that as the default. From here, just hit the play button and you'll run through the steps that I showed you earlier. So there you have it, a three point polar alignment that works anywhere in the sky. What more could we ask for? But not only that, Nina works not just with dedicated astronomy cameras, which it does do exceptionally well, but also with many DSLRs. So you don't need a dedicated astronomy camera to now get super precise plate solved polar alignments. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something. If you did, you know what to do and I'll see you in the next video.